think I must have been around nine years old when I'm watching this TV show with my dad. It is our favorite show. And in this episode, I see a grown man holding the head of a giant saltwater crocodile. The head is bigger than his torso, and he's holding it with both of his arms. The man is crying, sobbing, in fact. This crocodile, his dear friend, had died. I recognized myself in this man. In his eyes, I saw the same love for non-human animals that I felt, and he became my hero. I'm born an animal lover. I've always liked them more than my own species. <laughs> From an early age, I saw that we humans have a big problem, and that is injustice. Horrible things happen to all sorts of beings because of misinformation and prejudice. A small example from my own childhood. In my class, there was a boy with a cleft palate, and he was bullied relentlessly. This made me so upset that some days I would come home crying. I could simply not understand the cruelty of this. Did he ask to look like that? Does it matter? How pointless is it to judge someone based on things they have no control over? How pointless is it to judge someone based on their appearance? I quickly learned that this injustice was not only directed at our own species. For example, I found it very strange that we in the Netherlands, we adore our dogs, but we eat pigs. Is it because we'd rather not hear the truth? that pigs are sentient and social beings who are even smarter than dogs? The same injustice I also noticed when it comes to wild animals. We hear a lot about the struggles of lions, pandas, and rhinos, but the so-called uncharismatic species, like snakes and crocodiles, are largely ignored. A good example is also the killing of Cecil. Maybe you remember this. This lion was killed by an American trophy hunter seven years ago. It was on the front page of every newspaper. It was addressed in media around the globe, and the hunter even had to hide. Yet when an Indonesian village proceeded to kill 300 innocent crocodiles, after one of the villages was attacked, no one even talked about it. Our hate and fear for reptiles is woven into the fabrics of our society. What do you call a deceitful person? A snake. What do you call a place or group full of chaos and distress? A snake pit. Even in books and movies, snakes and crocodiles are usually the bad guy. Think about calf from the Jungle Book or the snake in the creation story of the Bible, or the countless of horror movies made about crocodiles. The image of reptiles that is portrayed in the media contributes to our incorrect perception of these animals. And if you thought that this injustice was only a problem in society, unfortunately, scientists aren't any better. A very, very famous scientist once said about the marine iguana, which is a lizard species, the marine iguana is a hideous-looking creature of a dirty black color, stupid and sluggish in its movements. This guy is probably familiar to all of you. It's Charles Darwin. And of course, those were different times, but the situation nowadays is not much better. Scientists actually studied if birds and mammals receive more scientific attention than other species. And the results did not lie. Despite reptiles being more diverse, meaning that there are more species, they are less studied than mammals and birds. This phenomenon is called taxonomic chauvinism. We clearly see that not all animals are equal to us. How is it possible that many of us intuitively feel it is wrong to treat a human differently based on their race and appearance? Yet when it comes to other beings that we share this planet with, we throw away our empathy and morals. Why is it not okay to be racist, but completely normal to be speciesist? Well, what is all this discrimination based on, you might ask? 
culture, parenting style, and the media play a huge role in our collective fear. A lot of our fear is based on misinformation, things that are simply not true. Let's see. Who of you believe that uh, all snakes are dangerous? Some people. And who of you believe that reptiles are aggressive? And who of you believe that reptiles are slimy? <laughs> a lot of you. <laughs> All of these statements are not true. Yet, as you can see, many of us believe them to be facts. The truth is, reptiles are sentient, remarkably gentle, and complex animals. And they are not so different from us, which I will come back to. Another reason for this bias is anthropomorphism. This is when we project human traits onto non-human animals. For example, pit vipers, they have an enlarged scale above their eye. So to some of you, they might seem angry. But that is because we frown when we are angry. Pit vipers, well, they just look that way. <laughs> In contrast, there are many traits that we perceive as positive such as personality and intelligence, and those we do not seem to see in other animals, even though science tells us that these traits do not only occur in humans. And this is such a shame, because if we would know that these animals are not so different from us, we would care more about them. You might ask yourself if it actually matters that these animals are being discriminated against in science and society. This is actually a good question, because my message is not love these animals because I do. My message is love and protect these animals because they deserve it, and they are important for us all. And at the moment, they're not doing very well. In fact, they're declining worldwide. One in five reptiles are endangered. Another one in five are not even assessed meaning that some of them could go extinct without us even knowing it. Habitat loss, the illegal trade, invasive species, pollution and disease are all problems reptiles are dealing with, thanks to us. And this is, of course, bad for the reptiles themselves, but why is it important to us? Well, we simply cannot live without them. You see, an ecosystem is like a spider web. Each thread is its own species with its own role and function. Many reptiles help keep the balance by being both predator and prey. Some reptiles, like most crocodiles, are apex predators. They are on top of the food chain, and they have the important job of controlling the smaller predators under them. And they also work as cleaners, as they eat the carcasses that could otherwise spoil the water. Seed dispersal is crucial for a healthy ecosystem. Even reptiles that only eat meat can be seed dispersers. The red inside the snake's stomach will be completely digested, but the seeds inside the red stomach will be pooped out elsewhere by the snake. Many people are terrified of venomous reptiles, but venom also saves lives. A lot of, it's actually likely that many of you are alive thanks to reptiles, or you know someone who is alive thanks to reptiles. Their venom is used to make medicines for humans to treat diseases like diabetes and heart disease. Reptiles are also important for our biodiversity. We can only have a healthy planet when biodiversity is high. That is when the spider web is strong and when ecosystems will be resilient. But, but, fighting for a high biodiversity doesn't mean only conserving the species that look cute. So, how do I plan on turning the tide? Well, just like my hero, I believe that humans want to save things that they love. And we love things that are similar to us, things that we can relate to. Jane Goodall showed us that chimps are not the savages we thought they were. By her showing us that they use tools, we saw another side of them. We could recognize ourselves better in them. I want to do the same for reptiles. 
Yes, some snakes can kill you, and yes, some crocodiles can be dangerous. While all of that is true, this is not the whole story. Reptiles can be caring, protective, and gentle. Take the king cobra, for example. To me, this is the best mother of the animal kingdom. She meticulously builds a nest for her eggs, which is very hard to do if you don't have any limbs. And once her nest is constructed, she will lay on top of it and protect it with her life. Nothing comes between a king cobra mother and her babies. She will even stop eating. And yes, those jaws of crocodiles, they can crush bones, but mother crocodiles and even fathers also use them to gently carry their children. Oh, and by the way, crocodiles use tools too. They balance sticks on the top of their snout to attract nesting birds that are looking for nesting material. Pretty clever, right? And while they might look brutal, their faces are more sensitive than our fingertips. Snake brothers and sisters use their heartbeat to communicate with each other while still inside the egg. Pinecone lizards are monogamous and stay together for life. In one of their studies, scientists followed a couple that has been together for more than 27 years. This is longer than most human couples last these days. <laughs> and when one of them dies, the other one stays with the corpse for several days, maybe to mourn. Male iguanas will protect their sisters from predators by lying on top of them, sometimes even sacrificing themselves. Turtles, who were long thought to be mute and deaf, actually communicate a lot. Brothers and sisters, parents and their offspring, and nesting mothers use a wide variety of sounds to speak to each other. Communication, parental care, brothers protecting sisters, monogamous relationships, Reptiles are not so different from us. So it was my dream to meet my hero, Steve Irwin. Unfortunately, that never happened, and it never will. When I was 12 years old, he died. I was devastated. I was devastated because I would never be able to thank him for all he did. But on that same day, I made a promise to myself, the animals, and symbolically to Steve, that I would dedicate my entire life to making the world a better place for animals, especially those that are unjustly hated by humans. Actually, this is my life's mission, the reason why I'm on this earth. I do this through my own research and through educating others. Once the public opinion about these animals is changed by telling people the facts, it will be much easier to conserve them. Like my hero once said, humans want to save things that they love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.